Welcome to Hockey Podcast, where we have conversations with various guests. Today, we have a special guest, Margarita Monet, the lead singer and founder of Edge of Paradise. How's it going? Good. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me. Yo, you're welcome. So where are you from? And tell my listeners your origin story. Uh, well, right now I'm based in Los Angeles, uh, but I was born in Armenia. Then we moved to Moscow, Russia when I was three. Uh, then when I was 11, we moved to Houston, Texas, and um, I went to middle school, high school in Houston. Then I went to college in New York, um, NYU, and uh, after that, I came to Los Angeles, and here I am. <laughs> so, and I've so, been well, all- so did you go to New York for your um, musician musical background to, to, to get a degree in that? Yeah, well, I studied theater and music, and I took astronomy classes, so... Um, I, you know, have background in music and theater, but uh, my dad is a scientist. I've always had an interest in that as well. Um, So, yeah, I tried to kind of uh, do as much as I could, (laughs) you know. Mm -hmm. So what was your upbringing like for you, like regarding family or just in general with your life in the early days? Yeah, um, I was lucky with my upbringing because my parents exposed me to a lot of arts and music and just um, like since the er really early age, I was going to a lot of uh, classes. Um, You know, I was in ballet and theater. I took piano lessons since I was three. I I went to a full-on music school. So I was exposed to it from when I was really young and we went to a lot of shows and concerts and I always was in love with, you know, anything, um, performance, um, you know, performing arts and just culture in general. I loved going to art galleries and I got to travel quite a bit. So, um, I was lucky in that regard. And then when we moved to the United States, um, you know, it was quite a big change, but, I feel like uh, I've adapted and uh, it was new experiences and I loved going to New York as well. That was a um, a whole new adventure for me. And then, of course, moving to L.A. So I feel like my background kind of helped me navigate the world. <laughs> so how was it like when you first moved to Los Angeles to start your career in music? Uh, it was. You know, when I moved here, I was trying to do a lot of different projects and just kind of uh, survive in LA, I guess. So I uh, didn't just start in music. I did a lot of different um, theater projects and film projects, but I met Dave, who's the guitarist, and co-founder of Edge of Paradise pretty early on. And uh, yeah, we kind of started the band right away. But you know, it's not easy moving to a whole new state. Uh, You know, I was really young at the time, uh, but um, somehow (laughs) it all worked out. Mm -hmm. So So, so tell us about your, how the band came about and how long you've been doing, uh, how long you've been the co-founder and the lead singer of your band for? So we started, well, we met in, mm, I forget when, <laughs> it's been it's been quite a long time ago. I've been in LA for over 10 years now. So when we first met, um, like we were doing other projects and we were just kind of working together on, you know, trying to figure out, uh, we didn't even start writing music right away because Dave had a lot of songs left over that he wrote with Robin McCauley, who he was in the band with before me. And I, I never really sang before or in, especially in a rock group. I never imagined I would be in a rock group. I was always, you know, I did piano and I did some musical theater, but I never moved to LA to become a singer or anything like that. So, you know, I it gave me a good opportunity when I sang over the songs he already have, just to kind of figure out, <laughs> you know, how to... I uh, guess I wanted to sound like, you know, just, you have to start somewhere, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. But we what we aligned is we really were passionate about creating something and following through with it and dedicating all our energy and time into it. But really, it took us years to figure out how to write 
songs together because we came from such different backgrounds. Um, so I think in 2017, when we released Universe, I think that's when it really defined the sound of Edge of Paradise. And that's kind of when I feel like now the band really started. Because anything before that, we did put out songs together. Like the first song we wrote together was In a Dream. And I still really love the song, but when you hear that music, it doesn't sound anything like us. But yeah, so it's kind of the background a little bit. So who are your who are your musical influences that you looked up to that were like, okay, this is who I want to like, not carbon copy, but like I want to like get inspired from so I can like do mm -hmm. something like that with my own music career? Uh, you know, with me, I didn't really have that just because... I uh, like I played classical music my whole life so that was really my point of reference. I listened to some rock and I mean I really my dad you know they my parents had a lot of like VHS tapes of Led Zeppelin and Queen like live concerts and I would watch them sometimes but I didn't I didn't even like even think I could remotely do anything close to that. So uh, when we started the project I didn't really have any references like that. I really loved Ronnie James Dio. Um, but then again, I think I really had to figure out for myself what I wanted to be like, what I wanted to sound like, what I could do. Um, but I know like writing songs, I definitely think the classical music background subconsciously always influences me with melodies and with what I write. So I think that's kind of my biggest influence in a way. And then what I loved about Ronnie James Dio is that how every word, every everything he sang had so much emotion and feeling in it. And that's what I really love about rock and metal is that it's such, it's just pretty much wearing your soul, you know, on your sleeve, as, as they say. So to me, that was always really important is to fuel each word, each note with emotion and the story. And maybe that's kind of the theatrical background <laughs> for me, but that's kind of. So when you initially were, got started, you and your co-founder, the guitarist, what were your initial goals for the band? Or were you just like, Let, let's, figure, let's figure what we want to do and then eventually it'll become a goal? Uh, well, with us, we did have a goal. We wanted to create something unique and uh, take it as far as it could go so we did have that goal but we didn't really know what it's gonna look it was gonna look like until we really found what we wanted to sound like so it, that's what took years is writing music and uh, playing with different band members and touring and um kind of shaping our goal and now it sh it's shaped into a band obviously but it's more of like a multi-dimensional band and that's kind of what i wanted to do um because i i really love everything about performing arts whether it's you know making music videos making art like i really wanted that multi-dimensional approach and you know having artwork to kind of um, be a part of the band and uh, now we're releasing a graphic novel so really um, showing uh, telling the story of, of like our latest album for example so it kind of really grew into that and I want to still keep developing um, you know different levels of what this can be <laughs> mm -hmm. so. so how do you decide like I know you already have it you have how do you decide the other band members? Do you like go to like you have them, you interview them and like, okay, let me see what you can play. And if it fits you and your co-founder's goal, and then you move forward with them. Is that how the process works when you're choosing a any like guitarist, uh drum member? Uh it you know, it varied from different members. Sometimes that's exactly it. Like we would invite them to rehearsal, they would learn a few songs and then we would play together. And if that works well, because it's not just about what we like, it's also about how we um you know fit with each other, um, how we play together. Uh so because there's a lot of great musicians out there, but 
um, has to be the right person for you know a certain certain type of music and just personalities uh so you know after we played together we would yes yeah, sit down and kind of talk about our goals and see if we fit that way or sometimes like for example if our drummer knows someone like with our current bass player kenny our drummer jamie he knew him from a previous project so he brought him in and we played together and it worked and you know that's how we kind of got um to this lineup together um but yeah kind of depends mm -hmm. So you talk about the new uh, album that you released last year. What was the process like when it came to songwriting and the cover art and all that fun stuff that may have gone with it when you were doing, when you created the album? Hologram, yeah, that's the latest album. Uh, we recorded that, we had a strict deadline, so we recorded that in like three or four months. Um, and that was the first album that all of us as the current lineup um, were in the studio and we were kind of creating the album together. So it really brought new energy to the music, which I really like. Uh, but yeah, we were in studio. First, I, it kind of starts with um, maybe I have some something on the keyboard and I make like an instrumental uh, version of the song and I would record vocals over it. And then we kind of finalized the demo with our producer. Um, but I record the vocals first, then we go in and we lay down the drum track and that kind of brings the song, um, you know, the energy of the song. Then we will record the guitars and the bass uh, and then I would re-record all the keyboards last and then we would send it off to mixing to Denmark. Jacob Hansen mixes our music. Um, and then, you know, once the songs are there, the title of the album sort of reveals itself because, uh, you know, throughout we kind of think about it, but it's never until the last song is there and you listen to everything, the title kind of reveals itself. And so does the artwork. I do a lot of art myself, but like album art, I never really wanted to because I love that outside contribution of another artist. So, you know, I would send all the songs to this artist I like. In this case, it was Alex Ruiz. And I told him kind of the vision of the album and what the songs were about and the story behind it. And he kind of created the album cover. And that's, that's how we ended up with what we have right now. Mm -hmm. So how many songs did you write for this current album? And how did you decide what songs you did not want and did want in the album? Because I know you have like, I know a lot of artists release like 13 songs, 12, 12, 13 songs, and things like a cutoff point where you can release more than 13. So how did you decide to go about with that? Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of a different band in that regard because uh, some bands do write a lot of songs and then they pick. For us, we kind of start with an idea and that's going to become a song. <laughs> so we don't write more than we set out to have 10 songs on the album and we make one song at a time until we reach those 10 songs. And then each song kind of leads to the next one because I like to kind of keep the storyline going and uh, each song ends up influencing the next. So that's kind of how we work. But uh, because our music, it takes really long time to kind of record and layers so it's hard to just kind of come up with a bunch of songs and then pick um so, yeah. mm -hmm. so how does it how does it feel like being the lead singer of a band now you've done it already for quite a while uh well i mean it's i don't i don't i don't really think about it i guess it feels cool it's a lot of work <laughs> it's kind of stressful at times but i really love what i'm doing it's kind of of my identity in a way um and uh, it gives me purpose <laughs> so i really enjoy what i'm doing that's good so what's some of the challenges you face when you're performing live on stage uh well you know there's always a challenge uh, for example um when on tour uh, you know bringing all the equipment like the technical obviously it's i'm always always a little bit nervous just so the show runs smooth but uh, you know by now we have a really good system so I kind of uh, at ease a little bit with it but um, yeah I mean it's 
it's it's really I really love performing. It's one of our favorite things to do is to play live, is to connect with people. So you know, main challenge is just to getting to the venue, setting everything up, <laughs> and then once all of that is done, it's it's, it's all fun. Mm -hmm. So, what is your favorite song to perform, and why? Uh, you know that kind of changes day by day. Um, every song means a lot to me, but um, maybe lately it's been "The Faceless" and "Soldiers of Danger." Uh, before it was always "The Unknown" um, because it just means so much to me, and now it's been "The Faceless" because it really holds the core of the storyline that you know the hologram album is. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really epic song. I really like emotional songs where I can really open up and connect to the people and just kind of, you know, it's an epic song and I really love that. But, you know, Hologram is always fun. It's super upbeat. So yeah, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. So what is the most memorable venue you have played at and why? Hmm, that's an interesting question. A lot of venues are cool. I guess I have to go with the Wiltern lately uh, because that, that was on the last tour that we had with the, with Dragon Force. And the reason I'm saying it is just because it's a really iconic venue in Los Angeles. It's one of the most beautiful theaters we have out here and it's not easy to get in there to play. So it just felt really cool that... Um, you know, we got to play there. And also for me, it was really awesome that we got to play in Times Square, like right in the middle of Times Square and Palladium. And since I lived in New York, it was really special to be able to go back and, you know, play that venue. Yeah, I was lucky enough to see you guys live at the World Turn. That's how I was able to connect with you. Uh, Cause I saw, you, yeah, I saw you guys. I was like, I don't know, Edge of Paradise. And they're going on tour of Dragon Force because I'm a huge fan of their uh, band and Amaranth and the other band I didn't know that well, but those two other bands. I mean, the second, uh, uh second group that went on before, Amaranth and the Dragon Force. I went on. I knew who they were because I, I was a fan of them. I was like, Ooh, Edge of Paradise. That sounds interesting. So I rather go s s see you guys live. I was like, you did phenomenal. You did a great job. Thank the only you. one critique I had is not against you guys. It's just whoever was the sound guy had the bass turned up way too loud in the in the mm -hmm. venue. Yeah, yeah. That of the challenges well the, for the for us on the tour a challenge was that we didn't really get much of a sound check with each um uh, show because of the time constraints the next tour we're going with with firewind we're direct support so we get a full sound check so with this one that's why you know I'm always nervous is because it's hard to, um, you know, adjust and dial in our sound as we want it just because we don't have that time. But yeah, you, you, know. you guys did a good job. It's just that Thank base in that venue was turned up to like max 100. It was very difficult to hear you sing. Mm. Well, that's good to know. I'll tell the sound guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I never, I've never interviewed an artist and never told them that. You're the first one I've said like on recording. That's even one of my critiques. They each venue I've gone to, the bass on any any I've seen Spirit Box Live, Ghost Live. Their Ghost's been good, but Spirit Box, I couldn't hear the lead singer sing at all. It was the bass was turned up on, in that venue super loud. That's interesting. Yeah, it's good to know. Good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. So how do you maintain your vocal health during a rigorous touring schedule like you did with Dragon Force? Uh, yeah, that's, um, I'm kind of paranoid about that. So I always try to, um, you know, try to get sleep when I can. Um, I eat healthy, I don't smoke, don't drink, any of that stuff. So, um, and, uh, you know, knock on wood, so far it's been good. Uh, but yeah, you know, I try to do the ginger tea, honey all that good stuff uh but yeah so far i'm happy to say that knock on wood it's been okay that's, that's good to hear so going back to the dragon force tour what was your memorable memorable moment from that tour with like playing with alongside with them and just touring them just going on tour mm -hmm. with that band uh it was a really great experience they're such good guys and they're a great band super fun uh, but um, overall, it's been everything 
about this tour. Everybody was super cool. Um, everybody was helping each other out. Uh, we were all trying to just, you know, do the uh, get the tour done as successfully as we can. So we all worked together. Um, so I have nothing negative to say. Um, super, super good experience overall. And I mean, the challenge for us was that, you know, it was a lot of traveling and we had an RV this time. The next tour, we're going on a tour bus, so that's a bit easier. Um, but yeah, the travel was a little bit, um, you know, exhausting, but we made it through. So it was all good. Mm -hmm. So can you sh share a significant challenge you have overcome in the music business, like as an artist and the band? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for us, I feel like uh, because we do kind of tend to have a bit of a different sound. Like, for example, when we're in Europe, people say we sound very American. But when we're America, people are like, you sound very European. <laughs> so uh, we really had to carve out a path for ourselves. Um, we had to build the fan base from zero. We invested from the beginning ourselves. So we really um, rose up uh, from nothing and it was all up to us and we're super grateful to our fans because without them, we wouldn't be where we are. So, um, you know, that was the main challenge is to just kind of build this from the ground up. Um, and also, um, you know, in the music industry, you kind of, and I feel like other businesses would have this as well, but you have this kind of catch-22 where, you know, you can't um, get on big tours if you don't have a touring history. You can't really have a touring history unless you really go out and tour. So we had to, you know, from the beginning, we booked a lot of our own shows. We uh, toured as much as we could on our own, building up our fan base. Um, then, you know, going with record labels, you also have the challenge where you have some support on the financial end, but you still have to invest a lot of money. But now, you you know, you have a partner where the money is getting split. So it's just there's constant challenges, constant growth. Um, it's hard to know who to trust, who not to trust. And just like. Uh, I, I feel like with any business that you're starting, it's kind of this similar challenges, but on the scale of, you know, being in this performance art medium. <laughs> so, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of streaming services and the impact on artists like yourself? So I mm -hmm. know I've heard online that they don't give, they don't pay you that much. Like they don't pay certain artists that much. You have to go through a, thre a threshold on downloads. And then you have payments that come to you. So what what do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, well, of course, like we can't fight fight against it <laughs> anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe at the very very beginning, people tried, but um, I remember Spotify. It just kind of took over, and some people were against it. They weren't putting their music on Spotify, but at this point, you can't really avoid it anymore. And yeah, you don't really get paid much from Spotify unless you have, you know, once you're in the millions of streams, you get some, uh, yeah, some money flowing. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's only good for mostly for, you know, exposure, building your fan base and then going on tour is when you can. I mean, these days also, it's just so expensive to go on tour, but, you know, it's kind of still the way to make money off the merchandise and, um, you know, off the ticket sales. So you really have to be creative these days with the merchandise, with just different avenues of how to keep creating content that can generate income to keep growing as a band or as a business. So with each day, there's new challenges and... <laughs> We, you know, at this point, we just kind of go, have to go along with it and figure out how we can make it work for us. Mm -hmm. So are there any upcoming projects, new music releases or tours planned besides the one you just shared? You're going on tour in April, but are there any other projects that you're working on with any other artists? Yeah, so um, January 19th, releasing a song called Eyes of the Viper with um, Morton from Cyrenia. He has a solo project 
that called Mortemia. <laughs> so uh, we're releasing a song together and I'm really excited about it. So it comes out January 19th. Then January 26th, we're releasing an acoustic version of one of our songs called Another Life. And we had an artist from Armenia, Arsen, he played duduk, which is a native Armenian instrument. It's a really beautiful instrument. So um, I can't wait for people to hear that version. Um, then we will have, we already have two new songs for the next album. So before our tour with Firewind, which starts in April, we are going to release another single. Um, and then of course we're releasing the graphic novel for Hologram um, at the end of February or March uh, around that time. So yeah, we have a lot in the works and um, of course the tour is coming up fast. So we're excited for that one as well. So besides the two people you mentioned, are there any any other artists you'd want to work with in the future or to collaborate with? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many really great bands out there. Um, yeah, for me, I always was, I love movie soundtracks. Like I love Hans Zimmer, I love Clint Mansell. Um, uh, Nine Inch Nails, you know, Trent Reznor, he's doing a lot of soundtracks now. So I think it would be really cool to collaborate with something, someone like that, because every time I, like for my songs, I really love to create kind of these cinematic sounding tracks and then sing over them. So I think it would be really fun to um, collaborate with someone that, you know, does a lot of movie soundtracks. Mm -hmm. So do you watch any movies or show like when you're not like, working with the band mm -hmm. yeah yeah i really love movies um one of my favorite movies is um uh, interstellar i love inception uh, i love the fountain i love star wars <laughs> um i love you know world war ii movies um just yeah i like i don't really know right now what i'm watching i haven't really seen anything like Oh, well, the latest was actually a few years ago, but I really loved the show Dark. So if you, if you know that show, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. But So do you, uh, do you read when you're not working with music or is this music you're being focused right now? Uh, you know, right now, yeah, I don't really get much time. I try to, uh, you know, do a lot, as much creative stuff as I can, like with the paintings and with the music. So... Um, I mean, I do like to read, like, you know, the latest discoveries. I love the latest news in science. You know, that's kind of sometimes that influences what I'm writing about. So I, I really love all that stuff. But other than that, you know, I used to read a lot when I was like, in school. Um, but lately, I just kind of focus on writing, <laughs> writing myself. So. so how did you get interested? I've seen your artwork you posted on your Instagram. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. It looks wonderful. So how did you get interested in like start painting different things? Uh, well, uh, my mom, growing up, she always painted. She she still paints really beautiful um, art. So I kind of, you know, painted with her growing up. And um, a few years ago, uh, I think it was, yeah, when we released Universe, I feel like I posted something online and people showed interest in it, so <laughs> someone wanted to buy it, so I just started painting, and I did these limited edition box sets where I got wooden boxes, and I painted on each box, and it came with a CD and a t-shirt, and, you know, that was how we launched our album Unif Universe in 2017, or 19 I don't remember anymore. <laughs> but yeah that was the album universe and then from then on you know like with the unknown which came out in 2021 we recorded the whole album over COVID and you know we were all at home or at the studio so I painted um, an art piece for each song in the album and then I released a lyric and art book for that so yeah I just kind of kept going with it and you know the more I did the more interest there was so um, I'm painting every day <laughs> a lot, but I really, I really love it. So. That's good. You, you do a good job. I, 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 yeah, you, you had some, you posted on your Instagram stories about some of the paintings your mom did. I was yeah. like, wow, that, that, that was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. You yourself are very talented. 
I'm not I'm not a painter. I I do I do interviews, but you have a talent in painting. You do a very good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So explain the painting. Like, how do you get inspiration? How do you get ideas that pop into your brain when you're like creating the painting? Um, probably from them. I, you know, when writing music, I kind of always get imagery in my head. So I do have a lot of inspiration from the song and kind of what I see when listening to our songs, when thinking about the storyline like lately a lot of the art um you know some of the influence is from the story of hologram um because it, it's not really a concept album unless you really listen in and you know then you can tell it's a bit of a concept album and um, it's kind of like a futuristic sci-fi adventure story uh so there's been some artwork that features some of the characters like we have you know the faceless uh, which we have a song the faceless but in a lot of songs there's a mention of this faceless character and he's the rogue leader of this faceless civilization and they're the most advanced civilization in the universe and they're hidden from everything and they're the only ones that learn how to harness um, artificial intelligence and kind of merge with the AI um, and uh, they're slaves to forever <laughs> so it's uh, yeah it's you're gonna learn you're gonna find out more about them you know in the novel very soon so, but that's been an influence on the artwork as well so how do you find balance between your career and your personal life well um yeah that's always you know it's not easy because everything takes a lot of time you know, being in a band, it's very time consuming. But, well, I'm really lucky that I, I have a fiance and I, um, he is also an artist. Um, you know, he's in biochemistry himself, but um, he loves art. He creates a lot of art and music and he's um, created um, alien language for us that we incorporate in our merchandise. So we, we find time to work on things together, which helps, you know, spend time together. Um, and he supports and comes on a lot of the tour dates and, um, you know, travels when he can to see the shows. So yeah, I'm lucky that, you know, he's making it work with me. So, That's but good. That's yeah, good. but I can see that it, it can be hard when it is so time consuming and the touring and all of that. Mm -hmm. So now tell me about the three most influential people in your life and how they affected you positively or negatively. Uh, just in general, like that I know, or? It's just in general that you know, it can be your parents, whoever, however you want to answer the mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would definitely have to say my parents because they were the ones that exposed me and, you know, supported me throughout my life to, uh, you know, kind of pursue my dreams and my goals. So they have to be definitely one of those uh, three people. <laughs> um, I would say also, you know, some of the teachers I had, like especially moving to a whole new country, I had a debate teacher, Mr. Henley, and I feel like, I have to give him a lot of credit to really uh, opening me up to be more confident to pursue what I wanted. Um, I feel like at that moment in time, it was really important for me because uh, when I went to school here, it was very different. The culture was very different. Um, you know, it was, I spoke, I mean, we learned English from a very early age, but it's different when you're speaking it every day and it becomes your everyday language and, you know, you want to pursue your goals and dreams in that new language now. So I feel like you really pushed me. Like we went to, um, you know, as the class, uh, we were in um, debate tournaments, like all throughout the U.S. And um, I feel like that really helped me to like go to the performing arts high school that I ended up going to and then moving to New York. So teachers are really important in your life. And of course, like, you know, I, music teachers I had throughout my years, are super important. Um, you know, and then, you know, my fiance, of course, he's a great support and great influence. And, you know, 
Dave, the guitarist. So a lot of people, I guess. It's it's important to surround yourself with good people who motivate you and uh, support you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So now, what are the three most important life lessons you have learned so far? Uh, well, <laughs> I learned, uh, well, can't give up because that's kind of when it stops is when you give up. <laughs> so um, do it because you love it. And I have to keep telling myself that this is number one thing I'm doing this for is because I love it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, this comes kind of, I feel like, with a bit of getting older is to really stop and appreciate the moment because time goes by so fast. And uh, looking back, we did accomplish so much. And I have to kind of look back and be grateful for that. Because if you keep looking to the next thing, those moments just pass you by and you kind of um, forget to enjoy them. And I feel like it's important because you'll regret it maybe <laughs> just mm -hmm. thinking about the next thing so i kind of try to be more in the moment as cliche as it sounds mm -hmm. so do you have any goals for your band this year besides what you already shared um well <laughs> yeah i mean we're gonna have a new album new music videos more tours but yeah kind of in that vein you know and this the graphic novel so a, a, a lot of goals <laughs> so speaking of mu music videos how long does it take to like film i know you don't film but you participated you're participating in the, in the in the music video how long is the process of like filming it editing it and then re releasing it to the public mm -hmm. well um like it depends on the video like more of like the real um more intricate ones like we had maybe with uh the basilisk or hologram with the unknown where we work with a crew and a filmmaker like lately we worked a lot with isaac um moran and you know his crew so you know i kind of come up with an idea and it you know it, i have to do a lot of that pre-work really think it through i make a lot of the props I come up with a lot of these outfits you know the storylines so it takes me like maybe a week or two to really start planning it out. And then we usually film in one or two days. Just depends on what we want to accomplish. Maybe we go to two different locations. But it usually takes one full day or two full days. And then um, I edit it myself most of the time. So it takes me about a week or two weeks to finish editing it. And, you know, I don't like I kind of go back and forth because for me it's important important to like work on it a little and come back the next day and look at it with fresh eyes so that's why it kind of takes a span of a few weeks to really finish with the results that we're all happy with mm -hmm. so what advice would you give someone who wants to become a singer or just an artist in general like someone that's mm -hmm. young uh i would say really uh well first i really love what you're doing thank <laughs> you very much yeah, be ready to, you know, invest in yourself because this is you investing in your own future. You're building something of your own. So uh, don't wait around for other people to come along. I think it's important to kind of be the master of your own destiny in that regard. And uh, not to follow trends or chase trends because, like, I'm sure anyone recognizes now something comes and goes so fast one day it's popular next day the other thing is popular so you know by the time you make something that's popular today the next thing comes so i think it's really important to be authentic to yourself and create something that you love and you're proud of and i feel like other people mm -hmm. will relate mm -hmm. so questions to end the episode do you listen to podcast or you just write and do art uh, well, I, I do. Yeah, I really like, um, I like listening to, I'm really fascinated with like human psychology and um, just how people think. I'm also fascinated anything to do with astronomy and science and kind of 
futuristic new technologies and longevity research it just fascinates me like genetics all of that stuff so i do find like i don't really have like any specific uh, podcasts i go to but you know how youtube is you kind of search for topics and you always find something so i do like to listen listen to you know Mm -hmm. what's out there Okay, so is there anything else you would like to share with my with my listeners about anything? And this can be anything you want. Uh, well, just you know, keep tuned for all the new releases we have coming up, and just want to thank everybody for supporting us or supporting your favorite artists. Um, it's the fans that make all of this happen. So I'm just really grateful for, um, you know, all the people that support and listen to the music so thank you mm-hmm. and, and last so, you, oh, go ahead. You, now i just wanted to thank you because uh it's really important that you support and you know have conversation with artists so thank you oh you're absolutely welcome i i i'm i can't believe i'm talking to you I, it's kind of amazing I, you're oh. my first actual artist that's come on my show i have other people but you're like the famous one i should say that's come on my show so thank you so much for coming on I appreciate it. Thank you. So lastly, where can people find you online, you and the band? Uh, well, we have a website, edgeofparadiseband.com, and all of the current information is on there. But also across all social media, Edge of Paradise on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, on um, the Spotify. So yeah, we're, we're out there. Just search for us. And we're very we're a very friendly band. So. Mm-hmm. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Hawkett Podcast. You can listen to all my interviews on Rumble, uh, rumble.com slash Hawkett Podcast. And you can buy my merch on Hawkett Podcast. No, Etsy.com, Hawkett Podcast store. It's all in one word. You have to find it. Everything related to me is in my link tree, which is always in my show notes. That's it for me. Thank you so much, Margarita, for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all the interesting questions. I appreciate it.